Shine with Kendall Lanise. Real talk for real people. Let's shine together. All right, all right, all right. Hey, everybody. How are you? Welcome to Shine with Kendall Lanise. We are in our 10th season, as many of you know. A lot of you follow, subscribe to my YouTube channel as well as this podcast. And also you follow me on social media. And if you don't, please do. Everything is at Kendall Lanise. I'm so excited about this season as we are in season 10. Can y'all believe that? One thing about this podcast, I've been doing podcasts before it became popular. It became all over the place. It's a traditional audio podcast, and I have been doing it again for 10 seasons. And I did another podcast before this called Conversations with Kendall and East that ran, I think, two or three seasons. So I have been doing this for quite some time, and I'm glad that people have allowed uh, the newness of podcasts to allow them to live out their dreams or have great conversations because everybody has a podcast and everybody has a voice and there's something out there for everyone. So I'm grateful and thankful that you all are listening to Shine with Kendall and East and getting great feedback on season 10. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're focusing on words, redefining them, reimagining them just like the new color purple that's coming out is color purple reimagine um and that's what i'm doing with the words let's talk about how we can implement them in a different way in our life and maybe look at some of the words that we use often in a different way now many of you have been following as we've talked about um I was going to say the word what I'm going to say now be, but you probably already know if you read the intro then you know what word we're talking about but we've talked about a lot of amazing words this season and season 10 is coming to an end I think I'll do one more episode after this and then we will be on to bigger and better season 11 starting i believe it's the second week of january 2024 2024 y'all let's just pause on that for a moment 2024 wow all right so this season we've talked about the word silence we've talked about compassion we've talked about focus words right trust we talked about family and friends and what that really means. We talked about fearlessness. That was another word. And today we are talking about love. Never knew what I was missing to find. <laughs> Found love. Shout out to Keisha Cole. She put her heart and soul into that song. But we're talking about love. You can think about song with the word love in it. Think about music, soul child, song, love. Everybody wants love, whether they know it or not, whether they pursue it or accept it or not. Most people are looking for some type of love, whether it was as they were growing up, and having love from the ones who raised them or love from friends as they've gone into school, especially high school where, and junior high, which is a pivotal moment where people are looking for love. We're going to talk, we're going to keep it on the romantic side of love today because we have God's love, right? We have love from our families. We have love for the world and for one another, but we're going to keep it funky and keep it with the romantic love. That's the type of love we're going to talk about today because everybody craves love. 
Look at online dating. Look at the dating shows, the reality shows. Look at all of these shows and all of these apps for love. Everybody wants love and the market is so huge because everybody wants their person. Everybody wants somebody to love. All right, as always, we're going to start with this week's life note. All right, it's time for this week's life note. Sorry for the delay. I'm using a different mic and I just want to make sure. So hopefully you guys heard, hopefully you he you hear me clearly. Again, I'm using a different mic. All right. So a life note. What is a life note? It's a saying, it's a quote, it's a statement that will carry us through this episode, through next week, something that you'll say, hmm, think about throughout your life. Um, this is a quote by Virgo Hugo. I don't know. The supreme happiness of life consists in the conviction that one is loved. Another one, love is that condition in which the happiness of another person is essential to your own. I can read a whole lot of um, love quotes. Love is when the other person's happiness is more important than your own. That's that's all over the place. I know I read that twice. The love we give away is the only love we keep. Mm, they got deep with that. So when you think about love, there's so many things out there when it comes to love. We got Love Month, which is Valentine's Month in February. We got Black Love. We got shows talking about love. We got Love is Blind. We got all of these different shows um, what is that one? Um, I can't think of that one on, um, it's so many different reality shows. I'm not even going to sit here and try to name them all. There's so many and everybody is signed up for love. I just saw Lisa Ray is getting ready to be on a dating show because in her fifties, she's still looking for that solid love. We got celebrities, we got regular folks that we, we don't even know out here searching for love. So let's talk about love and what is that? Love, what is it? All right. So if we talk about the definition of love. It's an intense feeling of deep affection, right? The uh he loved her. He's showing affection for her. That's what that's saying or showing affection for him. She loved him. It's an intense feeling of deep affection. But what is the real meaning of love? It's a quality of feeling, of quality or feeling of strong or constant affection for the dedication to another, right? Then you go on. Well, what is the another definition of love? A strong feeling of warm personal attachment or deep affection such as a for a parent, child, friend, or pet. So even the definitions of love vary. Here's another one. A mix emo it's a mix of emotions, behaviors, and beliefs associated with strong feelings of affection, protectiveness, warm and respect for another person. So everybody has a different definition of love. You can line up 40 people. And everyone, if you say, well, what is love to you? And I'm going to do an experiment like that too, um, just to see what people think. What does love mean to you? Everybody is going to answer the question slightly different. Now, some may still have the, the exact answer that two, three, four, ten other people had. And then some people will have a different love. So I ask you, do you know what you're missing when it comes to love? Or do you think that you loving yourself or the love of your friends and family and God is all the love you need? Are you wanting romantic love? 
Now, this is the thing. You can be in a relationship right now, but not get love. You may be desiring love, or you may be in a relationship right now, and you don't know how to give the love. Or you might be sitting home twiddling your thumbs or listening to Shine with Kendall and Nice, saying, I want some love. Let me manifest it. Let me pray. Let me tell all my friends and my neighbors that I'm looking for love, male or female. But I want to talk about we talked about what it is, right? Now I want to talk about if you think that you're ready to receive love. And then we're going to talk about if you can if you can give it, but to receive love, that's what we're going to start with because somebody may be showing you love. Let me let me back up and say this. Love just like the definitions vary, so does the way you show love to people you can't show the same love you showed from the ex to the next because everybody is different everybody's requirements are different you can't it's not a one size fits all but people will love with the capacity of love that they have so that's why it's so important to be able to receive love and know how to receive love and then give love. One might say, well, no, giving love is more important. And some may say, no, receiving love is more important. But you have to do both in order to get it and give it. Because if you know how to receive it, you know what that's like, you know what that feels like, and you're ready to give that to another. We're going to take a quick break, and we're going to talk about how or if you are even ready or know how to receive love. We'll be right back. Hey everybody, this is Kendall Anise, the Remix Coach. I just want to remind you that I am a certified transformational life coach, healing and aging coach. Been doing this for over 20 years and I'm currently accepting new clients. For more information about my life coaching services, please visit KendallAnise.com. Now back to the show. All right, we back. Um, Thank you for joining. And I just want to say to all my riders, all my cuties, my cuties with a K, those are my supporters. Thank you so much for continuously listening to listening to Shine with Kendall and and following me. And, you know, I appreciate your comments and all your feedback. Um, If you are new to Shine with Kendall and and this is your very first episode, I'm so glad you're here. I thank you so very much. You could be listening to Fifty eleven 11 podcast, but you're choosing this one in this episode, and I greatly appreciate it. That means I feel the love, and I know how to receive the love. All right, so let's dive deep. Why can't some people receive love, or why do some people have a difficult time knowing what love looks like? So, of course, we can talk about past traumas. Um, love being unfamiliar. If you never grew up getting hugs and love and then somebody shows you that, you're looking at them like, what you doing? What is this fuzzy, warm feeling? I don't recognize this. And you're standoffish or you feel unworthy of love because somewhere down the line, you know, as a life coach, it's always, you've got to rewind it back, dial it back because somewhere down the line, someone made you feel unworthy now it didn't have to be a romantic partner somewhere down the line it could have been your family of origin how you grew up who raised you you felt unworthy or unloved or you had several siblings and you know your parents did their best to try to show you love but if you have a household of 10 or 5 or 15 then you might not have got the love that you require. And every person requires a different type of love. And there's so many reasons why uh, you, you don't receive well. It's very common to not even know how to accept love or receive love by a compliment. You ever hear somebody when you give a compliment, they don't even know how to receive the compliment compliment they don't even know how to receive the love it's awkward for them it's weird you know and really all you have to do is receive it hold it hug it and just say thank you but so many people talk them out of love they'll be like this old thing 
oh, I had this for a long time. I have been guilty of that. I believe I'm worthy in re to receive love. And I believe I know how to receive love, the, the right kind of love for me. But I think we've all been guilty of not being able to accept love in the in the way of a compliment. I, I I can accept it now because you just simply say thank you, you're kind, or however you want to say it. But I remember I would say, and I've heard and I watch people do this. Oh, that's a nice sweater. Oh, I've had this sweater for like 10 years. It's so old. Look at it. It's too instead of just saying thank you, somebody is trying to give you love, but you're talking yourself out of love. Doesn't matter how old it is. If they're trying to show you love, show it. I've seen people all the time. Oh, you know, that's a nice watch. Oh, well, I didn't really buy this watch. I, somebody gave me this watch. Da, da, da. Just say thank you. It's difficult for people to receive love. I was reading Psychology Today. And it was an article that said, Why We Struggle to Receive Love. See? People are struggling to receive love. Excuse me, I'm trying to, <clears throat> I don't want to do ASM, a, what, AS, a, ASMR or mukbang. I'm not eating or anything. For some reason, I'm trying to clear my throat. So show me some love. Show me some grace. And I apologize um, if that sound gets on your nerves because you know some people don't, don't like that. All right. So, why do we struggle with love? Love may be all around us, but it won't matter unless we receive it. We don't notice love when we get it. Now, a psychologist says one barrier to receiving love is that we don't notice it when we get it. She did a study and it's of, entitled, Acceptance is in the Eye of the Beholder. Now, we've heard beauty is in the eye of the beholder but acceptance is as well people filmed themselves they did a uh, experiment people filmed themselves discuss discussing several topics then they watched a video from a stranger who allegedly watched their video and was responding to it the stranger was actually an actor hired by a researcher and all the participants watched the same video in re in the response video the stranger purposely affirm the, the participant saying, I'm with you on this one, smiling and saying, I hope to see you in the second part of the study. Well, reactions to the video vary. Some realized the stranger liked them and others didn't. Why? Self-esteem. People with low self-esteem didn't pick up the stranger's acceptance. They were less sure of whether the stranger liked them. These results suggested that our self-esteem is low and we ignore signals that others like. And even something as simple as that, if people are watching to receive an, a compliment. So it goes on to say, according to another study, people with low self-esteem agree with statements like, I feel like I don't know exactly who I am after getting a compliment. And when I am complimented, sometimes I feel like the other person clearly doesn't know me. The study also found people with low self-esteem are more likely to feel negative, negatively from compliments and devalue compliments. It feels easier to reject a compliment than to reject your sense of who you are. It's so interesting. When you think about, as a life coach, I like to, to go deep. And when you talk to some people or you see some people or you see how people move you can see when it's difficult for some people to not allow love in because of hurts traumas past pain and it's easier to be hard and put a barricade around your heart so you don't have to feel vulnerable because for some reason and I need to do the word vulnerability but because some reason people feel that vulnerability is weak and being vulnerable in my opinion is one of the strongest things you can do because it takes a lot to let your hair down and just feel and just be and be able to express yourself in that way 
But a lot of people cannot do that. And it could be because of past hurts or trauma or they just feel uncomfortable doing it. But in order to have a deep type of love, then you're going to have to be vulnerable at some point. And I know some people do not want to be vulnerable because they have and they have been hurt before. Most people seeking relationships are looking for true love, right? Lasting love. They don't want a temporary love. The ones that are really looking to connect and, and have love with someone, whether you're in a relationship or not, this is what most people want. They want to find a special person who they, you know, who meets their their expectations, who love them, who they can love, who they can talk to, uh, and and form their definition of love, right? And that's important to ask, well, how do you love? What is love to you? What does that look like to you? Because you can't go into any situation or be some in a situation and your love looks different. There are people in relationships right now that have been in relationships for multiple years and the love language is different between them and their partner and they've never discussed what love looks like because some people, if they think that they know how to love and that person knows how to love, then it'll be love all around. But that's not always the case because people have, again, different definitions of what love is and what that looks like. And oftentimes it it could be slightly the same, but more than not, it's a little different. And that's why love is so important. And people say, well, love lasts, right? You wouldn't, people wouldn't break up if love uh, was there. Maybe it wasn't really love. It both could have been love, but love looked differently to some based off of their experiences and who they are and what they've been through in life. That's why love is different for everybody and it looks different because we're all different. You see some couples that stay together forever. Their love looks beautiful on them, right? You see some couples where the love doesn't look so beautiful and some may venture out to say, well, it wasn't really love. It could have been love, but people love differently. Again, I'm going to keep saying that based off of their experiences. So why do so many people respond negatively about being loved? There was an article in Psych Alive and they talked about this. Now, love, kindness, affection, right? Respect, companionship is difficult to find but even more challenging to for people to accept and tolerate, they said. Um, this researcher said in her line of work, individuals and couples, they, she's observed, uh, respond differently when they say that they love. So being love arouses anxiety because it threatens long-standing psychological defenses formed early in life in relation to emotional pain and rejection. Therefore, leaving a person feeling vulnerable. Think about that. It totally makes sense. I'm a life coach. I'm not a psychologist. So I love, you know, although psychology classes and different things for my degree, I'm not a psychologist. So I love to put all of the knowledge together and just listening to people and reading and understanding certain things so we can do it effectively. Perfectly? Absolutely not. Effectively? Yes. All right. So um, others on this list says being loved arouses sadness and painful feelings from the past. So that's interesting. Being treated with love and tenderness arouses a kind of sadness that many people struggle to block out. Ironically, close memories and moments with a partner can activate memories of a painful childhood it experiences feelings of abandonment or feelings of loneliness from the past. People are afraid of being hurt in the same ways they were hurt as children. Let me tell y'all, everything stems back to childhood because those were the years that you were learning and understanding what love was. 
and then someone chops you down right there and you don't feel that feeling of love. Now, love is not gushy, gushy and all of that. It's not like that. I remember um, Will Smith was talking about Jada and they said always the color, people think red, the color of love is red, the hearts and all that. But it's really blue, right? When it comes to the connecting and the organic and trying to understand. And I think people put such a perfectionist aspect of love out there. It's so interesting. I'm doing this um, episode and I just looked up and it's the word love. Wow. And I never looked up and saw that word like I'm looking at it now. And um, wow, that's deep. That means everything is aligned. That's deep. But um, people have this romanticized and fantasized version of love. And when they don't get that, they think that they're not being loved. But love can look differently. You can have somebody that you've been in a relationship where or you broke up with or it's an old love, a new love, the love that you're in now. And you can see or feel the love. If you look at how someone shows love and what they value, it may not be necessarily the love that you needed or the love you need or want, but you can see their value on love and you can say, okay, if that's how they show love, then yeah, I can see that. I can receive that. That, But it's also important to really have conversations with people. Um, Number three on this list is being loved provokes a painful identity crisis. When people have been hurt, they feel that if they accepted love into their life, the whole world as they have experienced it would be shattered and they would not know who they were. Being valued or seen in a positive light is confusing because it conflicts with the negative self-concept that many form within their family. That's deep. That's deep when you think about that. And then you go on to accepting being loved stirs up painful issues. It's, it's so, man, and, and I, the, the word that I keep using is interesting because it is. Because people think they just got plopped here at age 25 or 35, 45, 55, 65, 75, whatever. And people don't understand that even something as simple and free as love, it's difficult to receive it. You might think love is the most organic thing to receive or accept. But a lot of people feel like it's weakness. And it equates to love in that way. Or they loved before and they got burned or hurt so they will never do it again. Love is that emotion, that word that people fear even though they say they want it. So how do we love, right? We know why it's difficult for many to receive love, but how do you love? How do you love somebody? What does that look like? The first thing that looks like is loving yourself, loving God, and to be able to love somebody else with an open heart. And loving somebody else is loving them how they want to be loved. But that takes honesty, vulnerability, and maturity. And age doesn't bring about maturity. The experience, the willingness to grow, the willingness to learn is what brings out love. And a lot of people do not understand how that works. So we're going to talk about how do we start loving somebody? Right, we're not going to talk about self love because I've done plenty of shows on that and I'll do some more, but we're talking about outwardly. We already know again that love yourself, love God, and then you can give it away not in a way where you don't have none left for yourself, but a way where you feel good about yourself. All right, mind, body, and green. 
15 ways to love somebody. Y'all want to get into it? Do we need to take a break? Do I need to... <clears throat> Do we need to take a break? What y'all think? What y'all think? You want me to keep going? I don't hear y'all because it's, <laughs> it's a live podcast. But I hear y'all say, girl, keep keep going so we can get through this here. All right. So, 15 ways to love someone and what that really means. Listen. How can you love someone if you don't know them? That's the first line. Hello, somebody. How can you love? This is the thing. When it, if somebody is trying to love me, I want them to know me. So when they know me and see the imperfections, sees the flaws, sees the strengths, sees the weaknesses, sees all the goodness, sees the, the, the beauty in me, all of that. When they say, I love you, then I know that they do because I can feel it and because I have been vulnerable enough for somebody to see. But if I'm putting on a facade knowingly, then, and if somebody says, I love you, it's like, I can't accept that because I haven't shown you, right? So it's important to listen. It says, how can you love someone if you don't even know them, child? So it says, make an effort to offer your undivided attention to your partner. Putting away your phone, (laughs) not allowing your mind to get distracted, by work, emails, TV, or news while spending time. All right, y'all. I know I've been guilty of that. And people that I coach, people that I see online, people that I talk to, nobody does that. I go to a restaurant. You see a people, somebody on a date. You're looking at them. Both of them are on their phone. So how are you going to build if you're always distracted? And the phones keep us distracted right but we have to fully connect that means we have to really engage with each other number two on their list is use your words a licensed psychological a psychologist excuse me i was going to say experiment uh licensed clinical psychologist who specializes in couples therapy um says just tell them it sounds so simple yet we don't do this enough You don't need an elaborate speech and you don't need to be the most eloquent. Chances are your partner likes engaging with you and that's talking to you. Tell somebody that you love them or you're looking to love them or how do you love? Talk to the people. It's important to do that. Say thank you. Express interest. That's how you can show somebody you love them. Express an interest in someone's life. I just had this conversation today. Wow on with one of my friends like you express interest in somebody's life like you can't just keep saying how you doing or what's the weather or da 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 da, and you're not getting to know someone because number one said you gotta know them you can't love somebody unless you know them but expressing interest in someone's life is a timeless way to show love and it's vital for connection Number five, notice what they need. When your partner is paying close attention to your to you, you naturally start to notice how you could probably make their life a little easier. For example, if your partner has been stressed, overworked lately maybe, you might plan a relaxing day at the spa. These types of type of gestures are special because they're thoughtful. Those are my best kind of gifts, thoughtful. They show that you're paying attention. Number six, do them a favor. Make your partner's life easier doesn't always have to involve something romantic, maybe like a spa day. It could be something very practical. That's my love language, y'all. Acts of service, like practical stuff. And acts of service is just simply doing something to make my load easier. That's acts of service. Um... It could be something practical. It could be simple. It could be, and this gives an example. If your partner is having a tough day, you may want to try to cook them dinner or pick up the dry cleaning. Do people still dry clean their clothes? I don't know, but I haven't. But help them free up some of their time so and take off something, you know, off their plate so they don't have to do. Number seven, physical affection. Of course, being sexual is one of the ways to express love, um, but it's much more than that. 
and touch that doesn't lead to anything sexual can be sometimes the most intimate of them all. I totally agree. This can be a hug. Who doesn't love hugs? Like, I love hugs. That could be hugs, holding hands, spooning, it says, playing with each other's hair or massage. But what if the people don't have no hair? But I guess, you know, I don't know. I get it. <laughs> it also means depending on your part, uh, de it depends on what your partner prefers. Eight, quality time. Depending on your work and your living situation, it says um, spending a lot of time with your partner is good, but how much time is intentional with both of you fully present in the moment, connecting with each other as a couple, right? So you can spend 20 hours with somebody, but if both of you are on your phones or if you're not really connecting, you're just in the room together or you're just at the whatever together or you're just going for a walk and you're spending time, but you're doing your thing or somebody else is doing their other their thing, then it's really not connecting. And of course, part of love language too is giving a gift. Far from materialistics are meaningful ways to express love to your partner. So it's not something, it could be something, a, a little trinket, it could be a flower at the supermarket, it could be anything just to show that you love. And I think when people think gifts, they think of extravagance, but it could be something as simple. If they know you like, um, I don't know, peanut chews, if they know you like uh, white roses, if they know, whatever it is, just to show and that leads to 11 on their list. Uh, well, 10, write it down. Sweet words are lovely, uh, but a handwritten note is something that's special and it's a momentum just showing somebody that you cared enough to write. Surprise them. Surprises have the power to break your usual routine. So do something out of the ordinary to show that you love a person. Be gentle during conflicts. That's a good one. That's how you can show love because most of the time during conflicts, People are just, you know, not being gentle. You're not being gentle with yourself and you're not being gentle with the other person. It's important to hash out conflicts as they arise, but that doesn't mean that the love shouldn't still be present as you navigate problems. I love that. So yes, there are loving ways to have an argument. Um, the Gottman Institute research found that successful married couples practice a few specific behaviors during conflict. First, they avoid pointing fingers and instead focus on their own needs. And a lot of therapists do this, y'all. I statements are key. Also avoid making generalizations like you always or you never. Um, number 13, practice accountability. Child, accountability is everything to me as far as just saying, you know what? I messed up. I apologize. Accept accountability. The reality is, it says that with many relationships, both people play some role. Absolutely. Love means that taking responsibility to, for your own actions, owning up to your mistakes, and saying sorry, admitting that your partner has a point. All of these things are difficult as they require humility and vulnerability. Say sorry. I don't have a problem saying sorry. I apologize. I was wrong. I'm sorry. I, da, da, da. it's important to do that because to me there's an act of love in there when you're saying you know what I'm sorry I didn't mean to hurt you I didn't mean to offend you or I didn't mean whatever it is and number 14 on their list is saying give them space love without boundaries is codependency set boundaries meaning acknowledging where one person ends another begins and one important aspect of this is separation involves time and space for your love to be healthy because that's what we want, right? Whether you're in a relationship or not, you must give your partner the freedom to prioritize their needs and desires as well. Both of, both of you, because if you're healthy, right, the other person is healthy, then you can come together and have a healthy relationship. If one person is unhealthy and the other one is healthy, that's not going to work. If both people are unhealthy, that's not going to work. Both people have to go off and do their self-work to be able to be healthy. Like I said, I would never date again, date anybody ever if they haven't gone to therapy or they haven't done 
self-actualization. They haven't had accountability. They haven't done some type of self-work, right? Because you can't get with anybody and you can't even do this where you're blaming somebody else for everything. Like that's impossible. Somebody has to take accountability, as it said, both parties. And that's how you can show love. The last one on this list is ask how they want to be loved. That's my favorite question, right? And you have to learn to say the only person who is an expert on how to love your partner is your partner. Every person on the planet is unique. So is every relationship. I think if people start talking, people start asking questions, people start, it's nice to talk about superficial things, right? That don't matter. But if you're trying to connect and you really want love in your life, then you're going to have to be able to open up, ask ask questions and have dialogue. Why do we need love? Do y'all know why we need love? Because it's healthy. It enhances our beyond collective survival, right? Love also enhances our individual survival rates. It is fact that one of the most important factors of our mental and physical health is love. Did y'all know that? The mental, emotional, and social advantages of receiving love and affection speak for themselves. Aside from helping you maintain positive, long-lasting relationships, your confidence and your self-esteem get a major boost. You and your loved ones can strengthen your bond and build greater trust. We all need love in our life. We all need a type of love that is healthy and whole. Love and affection can be essential for a human development and connection and reduce an isolation in every stage. There is something to be said about how all of these shows, once again, are number one. How dating apps are going through the roof. How dating services are going through the roof. How all these reality shows, all of these love movies, love, right? Everybody wants love. Some people think they're not deserving of it. Some people don't understand what it is. Some people don't know how to receive it. Some people don't know how to give love. But what it all has in common is everybody wants love. Keisha Cole said, love never knew what I was missing until I found love. If you never had it, you don't know what you're missing. But if you see somebody else that has it, then that's something you want. She says, I used to think that I wasn't fine enough. I used to think that I wasn't wild enough, but I won't waste my time trying to figure out why you playing games, what this all about. And I can't believe you're hurting me. I met your girl. What a difference. What you see in her, you ain't seen in me. But I guess it's all make-believe. Oh, love. I never knew what I was missing. But I knew once we start kissing, I found love. Never knew what I was missing. But I knew once we start kissing, I found love. Now you're gone. What am I supposed to do? So empty. My heart. My soul. Can't go on, go on without you. My rainy days fade away when you come around. Please tell me, baby, why you're gone so far away, why you go. Then she goes on to sing the hook. Now, when you listen to that song, you're like, dang, I ain't never loved like nobody like that. Or what is that kind of love about? Or I ain't never loving because I don't want to feel like that again. And when you listen to some of these songs, It makes you feel some type of way, whether it's vulnerability, whether whether it's unfamiliarity, whether it's like, I'm not doing this anymore. So I get why love is so popular to write about, whether it's the upside, whether it's the downside, whether it's the around side, but it doesn't stop people from wanting love. All right, as we conclude, once again, as always, takeaways from today's show.
All right, it's time for this week's gem takeaways from today's show. All right, it's quite simple. The takeaway is everybody wants love. But it's important to have a healthy love. And that healthy love starts with you. Get yourself right. Understand how to love yourself first. Because then it'll make it easier to be able to love someone else. If you haven't figured out how to love yourself or what you need or what love looks like to you, then you're not going to be able to express that to someone else. And then everything else is all null and void. Then you'll be singing Keisha Cole's song or another song saying, I don't want to deal with love anymore. But you can't expect somebody to love you if you don't know how to love yourself. You can't expect someone to define love for you if you can't define it for yourself. So this episode, I'm giving y'all homework. I want you to write down what love looks like to you, what love means to you, right? And how do you desire to be loved? I want you to just ask, answer all of those questions in any kind of way you want. If you're in a relationship right now, how can you love yourself better and how can you love your mate better? If you're not in a relationship, you want to understand and know what love looks like to you. How do you define love? So now you can express that to someone else and then hopefully you will get the love that you desire. Now that's your homework and this is Shine with Kendall and Nice. I'm so grateful for y'all. I'm so grateful that y'all took the time to come listen to little old me. If you feel like somebody needs the love because y'all showing me the love by sharing this love out, I'm not going to be mad at that. Please don't be stingy. Share the love. And if you haven't subscribed to this podcast, please do so. If you're able to rate please do so. If you are able to leave a comment, I would love to hear from you. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for listening in. Please, as always, tell a friend. Season 10, y'all, is almost coming to an end. We got one more episode. And, hmm, what will the last word be? Hmm. If you want to know or if you have a suggestion, make sure you email me at candelanise at gmail. Dot com. All right, y'all. God bless y'all. Peace. As always, thank you for listening to Shine with Kendall and Nice. We are in season 10, y'all. Thank you for rolling with me the entire time. To all my loyal listeners, I thank you, thank you, thank you. All my new listeners, I hope you repeatedly come back each episode. This is a life podcast. I am so appreciative of everyone here. For more information about me, you can always visit com. Follow me on all social media platforms at com. And oh yeah, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for listening in. As always, thank you for listening in. Please tell a friend. God bless y'all. Peace. Shine with Kendall Lanise. Real talk for real people. Let's shine together.